Okay, so um, outside of a bacterial cell, uh, we're typically going to have a cell wall, peptidoglycan uh, cell wall, or peptidoglycan plus uh, a second phospholipid bilayer, and then we went through all the other sorts of possible layers. It could be uh, protein S layers, there are sugar layers, a glycocalyx, and so forth. Uh, also found outside bacterial cells, another structure that we tend to see that's associated with these uh, are um, pili, fimbriae, and flagella. And now, in general, what we're going to have here is that pili and fimbriae are two terms um, that are sometimes used for specific things and sometimes used interchangeably. In general, they are interchangeable. Uh, you could use one or the other for most of the structures that we're going to talk about here. These are going to be the uh, fimbriae and pili. Um, but there are going to be certain cases where only one is used. So. And we'll talk about those potentially as they come up. Um, so, for example, so a pili or a pilus, I'll say a pilus uh, is singular, is a structure that extends uh, outside the cell uh, and it's used specifically, um, typically, to connect to other cells. Uh, it can also be used for motility, uh, sort of a almost a crawling like structure uh, where it can extend, attach, and then shorten and kind of pull the cell along so if it's moving. We're going to get over here to flagella in a minute where the cells are actually swimming around so it's a slightly different uh, type of movement. So uh, a pilus, um, often the, the term pilus is used often with uh, a structure we call a, a sex pilus in bacteria. It's used for conjugation. Uh, so in that terms, we'd never say fimbriae, it's always the, the pilus. Uh, and there's, so there's this one structure, there's one cell, there's another cell, and then there's an extension essentially from one cell who can construct the pilus, and in this case, the other cell cannot construct it. And then the structure actually connects the two cells together like this, <coughs> and the sex pilus has a kind of sounds, it's used specifically for the transfer of genetic information. So DNA uh, is transferred from one cell to another. For the transfer of DNA. It's, not, it's a unidirectional process, it doesn't come back, and we'll talk about conjugation specifically later on uh, in the course, but right now it's happening through this structure. Typically what we see uh, as far as the structure goes, uh, regardless of whether it's uh, pilus or uh, fimbriae, uh, we see uh, sort of a helical protein structure of repeating units. Like you can see here, proteins are repeating. Uh, it's anchored to the outer cell membrane, uh, outer cell wall part here. And then typically there's a pore that can open up part of this then to the periplasm. Uh, and so these units can be different for different types of pilus. So there are different types of pilus or classes of pilus. And one of the things that makes them different is what this particular protein is. Um, but in addition to that, even if you have the exact same protein constructing the pilus, these proteins out here at the tip can often be unique. They're almost always going to be unique. Um, and they're going to then, again, be unique for what the particular cell is going to attach to. So fimbriae pilus, um, in general, fimbriae, usually when there's many of them, um, they're often more referred to as a fimbriae. Fimbriae tend to also be um, associated more with attachment to tissues of other organisms or cells of other organisms. Usually there's many. There can be you know, a thousand uh, per cell, so a thousand little fimbriae, so these little hair-like structures. So um, you have the cell, and then you have all these little structures sticking off it. Um, now these are different than the flagella, which we're going to talk about in a second. These would be the, the fimbriae that are attaching to other cells. So kind of keep that separate as, as one topic. Fimbriae pili, mostly attachment, can be attachment from bacteria to bacteria, like this, could be bacteria to other cells. In general, they're the same, but there's very unique or specific protein differences, which we're not gonna get into the names of the proteins, just the basic idea, the most detailed structure is just that they're helical proteins that are repeating unit of the same type, making up um, the uh, 
pilus, and then there are unique proteins at the tip, uh, and then, but then there can be different types of these helical proteins, or proteins making a helical pattern, um, <clears throat> that can be found among different types of pilus. Now we're gonna move to flagella. <clears throat> In general, uh, the flagella tend to be very similar between, uh, obviously you can see here, this is a gram positive bacteria, and over here we have the gram negative bacteria <clears throat> based on the cell wall. Uh, membrane, peptidoglycan, membrane, peptidoglycan, very thin layer, and then the second uh, cell membrane or cell wall. Starting off, um, what we have are uh, this protein ring. that's embedded in the cell membrane, and that's gonna be the case for both. Uh, typically, there are proteins associated with it that can bind ATP and use ATP to provide a force that can spin this protein ring. Right? So the protein ring will actually start to spin and move around and rotate. Now, attached to that, <coughs> Going to be a little straight piece like this. Okay, you can see it going up here. Uh, this is the stalk. And then right here on the outside is going to be a curved kind of protein sheath. It's called the hook. And then finally, sticking off here is the flagella structure that we uh, really refer to as the filament. It's made up of repeating units of protein called flagellin. So flagellin is the name of the protein, so there's all these little units you know, that are making up this whole entire filament structure. And uh, <coughs> It's interesting that the, the filament proteins are actually made and they can actually be pushed through the structure um, to actually be posited on the end to, uh, to kind of build the structure outward. Put out there for attachment uh, in terms of its construction. Now for a gram positive bacteria, that's pretty much it. There's this, this larger ring structure here, um, the sheath, the hook, uh, the filament, and then what happens is it uses ATP and it spins and moves around. Now in gram negative bacteria, we have a lot more structure. So we actually have additional rings, okay? So we have a ring associated uh, with the peptidoglycan, something called a P ring. That's this one uh, right here. Um, and so that's in addition to um, the other ring. And then there's an outer one called the L ring that is attached to the outer um, phospholipid bilayer. Overall, then the structures are the same. They have a hook, you know, as well. Um, and then the filament and, and the flagella. So in general, um, the same sort of structure. So that's one of the un unique things about the overall structure of the um, bacteria uh, flagella versus, say, uh, the flagella in eukaryotic cells. In eukaryotic cells, uh, it's made of tubulin protein. So it's a different, different protein, uh, and it actually kind of shortens on one side and lengthens on the other, and that kind of makes it kind of move back and forth. It's more of a whip-like motion. Whereas in bacteria, this structure actually spins around. Okay. And that's because of these rings that spin, and it like a, just like a motor, essentially. So these are little motor proteins right, using ATP in order to change their shape and actually cause them to move. Now, bacterial cells, can have you know, a single flagella, like this. That's called mono, or one, tricious, a single flagella on the cell. It's a polar flagella. Typically, it's just found at one end. We can also have uh, flagella be polytricious, Polytricious flagella can be kind of simple like this, where you have just one at each pole, so a bipolar. 
flagella, but we can also have the flagella in a tuft like this. So there, there are multiple flagella, but they're all originating from the same point. Uh, that's called lophotretious. Okay. Can't see that last bit of it, but it's lopho and then the same tretious, kind of adding into all these. Uh, and then finally, um, we have one last type, kind of running out of space, but it's the, the most complex one. So you have a bacterial cell, uh, and then you have the, now these, in this case, this is different here than, say, the fimbriae, because these are all flagella, and so they're all moving, right? And they're all structured the same way, and they're moving sort of in the, the same uh, pattern, right? So this is a, a paratricious. Flagella. So that's kind of where they're surrounding the whole entire entire cell. So trying to keep these two things straight here. You have extensions from the cell. Right? Now, how are they connected? You know, to the inside, this is the cytoplasm, say here. So molecules from the cytoplasm. Say in this case, you know, in the case of the DNA transfer, the DNA, it has to be moved from uh, here out through this little pore, it'll go through a pilus, it'll be larger and then connected to another cell. That's a spe very specific, unique case, all right, that we're gonna see in something called conjugation. But in general, a pilus is mostly used for attachment itself, just, and that attachment can be specific because the little specific proteins or amino acids are on the outer part of each pilus. Um, you can have a you know, a few pilus, or you can have thousands of them. Uh, typically, when they're attaching to other cells, we call them the fimbriae. Fimbriae are usually longer uh, as well than uh, the, a little bit the pilus, which is the generic pilus, which is a little bit shorter. But they can also be used for moving as well. The pilus can extend out and then kind of contract and pull the cell along. In contrast, uh, we have flagella. The flagella are a kind of spinning structure on the surface of a cell, where you could just have one or you could have many of these along the surface. In general, there's gonna be a motor protein ring that's embedded in the cell membrane that's using ATP in order to spin. And then there can be, depending on the cell wall structure, multiple additional ring structures, which are motors, both motors and anchors, all right, into those membranes. Uh, you have this hooked area where it kind of curves up right at the surface, and then a very long filament that sticks off it made of specific proteins called flagella. All right, so you should be able to um, kind of sketch this out um, generically, you know, and label the different parts of the flagella and kind of compare a flagella to a pilus. And so what is the difference really between those two structures, um, both structurally in terms of the, the proteins that, that make them up, how they're organized, uh, how they're embedded in the cell wall, um, and then what their jobs are, what they actually do. Uh, and then are the basic names for the arrangement of the flagella, the monotretious uh, type, uh, the lophotretious, and the paratretious flagella. And that would be it.